if you really think about it, this is just like tokenism. Like we use this one person to be like, well, everything is done. We have this one representative when that's not the case. Calgary's mayor facing questions about why he hasn't done more to stamp out systemic racism in his 10 years in the city's top chair. But some, including the mayor, point out that question alone shows the challenges. The question in and of itself, in my opinion, is an element of systemic racism. You wouldn't ask a white mayor as the very first question, what have you done to solve systemic racism in your community? So as a friend of mine put it, so now people of color have to solve systemic racism for you for free? This conversation actually started getting pretty big when Obama was elected as president of the United States. Everyone said, there's a black president, that means there's no more racism. Well, that led many to say the U.S. had moved into a post-racial world. But like this case with Calgary's mayor, it assumed he had a lot more power than he did. How much power does a mayor actually have? He's one person. He can't control everything. Technically, no politician can. One politician cannot control everything. And just because a person of color has navigated the system successfully doesn't mean they're suddenly enabled to make sweeping changes to it. It's the system's job, and it certainly is not going to uh, happen because of one person or because of a oppressed group within that society. It's going to take all of us, and we have to collectively agree that this is a project that's fundamental to who and what we are as a people. You know, a lot of social justice issues uh, were brought forward by Indigenous people, Black people, other people of colour, as well as white people. But the reason why it actually happened on a legislative level is because white people finally agreed to it. In Calgary, Jonathan Muma, City News.